political analyst William Doris. Uh, thank you very much for being with us here on RT International. Now, everyone is talking about the handshake between Putin and Poroshenko and their body language uh, during what many called a high-stakes summit. But body language aside, do you think that there were any significant breakthroughs that could be made? Well, I don't know what happened in the talks. I know that uh, Mr. Poroshenko did not want to be in Minsk uh, meeting with President Putin. He wanted to be standing atop of a pile of rubble in Donetsk, proclaiming victory, hailing victory, and uh, waiting for a check from NATO and the Pentagon. Um, but that uh, his uh, presence in Minsk was a concession both to the uh, steadfastness of the resistance of the people of Lugansk and Donetsk and to the war weariness of the people in Ukraine, who uh, also are not looking forward to a cold winter. Poroshenko was elected on promises of uh, the majority of Ukrainian people did not vote for the right sector. They voted for Poroshenko because he promised a uh, peaceful resolution of the situation in eastern Ukraine, but instead uh, he did what his funders in Washington wanted, which was to unleash a, uh, an onslaught not unlike that which Israel unleashed against Gaza, with uh, artillery raining down on uh, heavily populated areas, airplanes bombing uh, uh, towns and schools, with uh, indiscriminately killing at least 2,000 people, women, children, the elderly, well, and uh, forcing hundreds of thousands from their homes. And that is continuing. I do not think Poroshenko is negotiating in good faith, but he is making a concession uh, to uh, the conditions he's faced with. Now, you, you mentioned um, that he's not negotiating possibly in good faith. You also talked about him wanting to stand on a pile of rubble in Donetsk. Uh, he, in the past, has said that he is working on a new ceasefire plan. Uh, how can he make sure that this particular plan works after previous uh, truce attempts have failed? Well, the shells are, I, I haven't, sorry, I didn't hear all you said, but the shells are still raining down on East Ukraine, and uh, the Ukrainian uh, government, along with the United States, and particularly Ambassador Jeffrey Piat, are still beating the rum, drums of war, making ludicrous claims about Russian troops being in East Ukraine, which, uh, you know, we would really, they would know it if that was the case. The only uh, Russian so-called intervention in Ukraine has been a humanitarian convoy, which they delayed for 12 days and has finally gotten through. Uh, no thanks to the Ukrainian government or the U.S. government, which they seem to think, uh, to want us to believe, is loaded with divisions of Russian troops, sort of like a Trojan horse. But it's bringing mm -hmm. aid the people of, uh, of that region desperately need. And apparently, at least, Poroshenko has been, been forced to concede that uh, that aid can come through, should now, come through. Doesn't seem there's much he can do about it. Um, another dimension to this meeting, fighting aside, is uh, Putin is saying that Kiev and Moscow are going to resume talks when it comes to the energy uh, deals. How do you think that uh, this can play out, considering that there has been a gas deadlock in the past? Uh, do you think that there can be some strides made here? I think it depends on whether Poroshenko is going to respond to the needs of the majority of the people of Ukraine. Or, or to the demands of, his, finan of the, uh, his government's financial backers in the West. There are, this has to be seen in the context of an international, of the world situation and the international agendas. Western Europe, the Western European bankers and uh, uh, the European Union have an agenda, and that agenda is to plunder Ukraine. Uh, the United States government has an agenda, too, and that agenda is confrontation with Russia to justify the expansion of NATO and to uh, provide markets for the U.S. fracking industry. Now, you mentioned... Uh, the people of Ukraine would be, of course, well served with a peaceful with peaceful relations with Russia and membership in the Eurasian Economic Union. You mentioned these Western backers, in fact, top EU officials that support Kiev. They were at this summit, and the U.S. has been backing the Ukrainian president as well. How do you think that they're going to react to what was said at this meeting, uh, considering it seems that there is some progress between Poroshenko and Putin? Well, the progress is due to the, to, the, to the resistance in East Ukraine, in Lugansk and Donetsk, and the war meridians of the Ukrainian people. Um, Europe has an, Western Europe is in a difficult situation. They want to, uh, to make money in Ukraine, but they don't want to uh, 
see a cutoff of gas supplies from Russia, which uh, the United States could care less about that. A disruption, and they want to uh, use the crisis in Ukraine to, to draw, a, create a wedge between Russia and the East and, and Western Europe to force Western Europe into a subservient relationship with the United States like existed during the Cold War and to force it to uh, uh, depend on, on U.S. oil monopolies for its energy supplies. All right. I appreciate your thoughts. Uh, thank you for being with us. William Doris, uh, political analyst right here on RT International.